In this Tyrannus video, we're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about flight modes, and as part of flight modes, we'll also end up talking about global variables. Now, flight modes, at its very simplest level, allows us to do cute things like show the mode on the screen. So here I have auto level, GPS hold, and GPS return to launch being shown in the display, and you can call the flight modes whatever you want. The great thing about flight modes is it actually provides you a simple easy way with a flick of one switch to set up three different things at once. So you can think of flight modes if you're uh, a pilot of planes as something like you might have a switch position for taxiing, you might have a switch position for takeoff, one for flying, one for approach and one for landing. And those may actually have lots of different things going on, including changing things like the trims, the name on the screen, and also setting things like global variables that can be used in wherever you input a number in the rest of the menu system. So in the previous videos that we've done, we've done things like set up exponential, and you could potentially have a global variable that sets the exponential to different levels. So you might have exponential really high when you're taxiing, and then you might have exponential much less when you're flying, or if you have a Sora, you might want the expo and positions of some of the controls changing, and it can all be related to the flight switch. Now the flight modes is not necessary to set up if you're doing simple flying or you're flying a quadcopter, but I quite like the idea of at least having the quadcopter's mode displayed on the screen. And at the very simplest level, we can just talk about how you set up the name. So flight modes actually gives us three things. Let's just have a look at a couple of slides. So if we break those three things down, they give us the mode names, so we can call it things like stabilize, horizon mode, return to launch, it could be taxi, soaring, um, air brakes, whatever you want to call it. Also allows us to set up different trims, so it may be that we have different trims uh, for each of the modes and we can take care of that in the flight mode switch, so they can be changed dynamically as you want things moving around. Probably more useful for plane and uh, soarers than for quadcopters. And then the last thing is global variables. And again, global variables can be used in the place of any number. So a great example is absolutely, as we've discussed, is doing things like the Expo. You can set up the Expo as a discrete number, but you might also want to set Expo up as a global variable and have that variable change as the flight modes. So have loads of Expo when you're taxiing, a little bit when you are flying around, and then more when you are on approach, maybe with the flaps down. So the first one we'll actually have a look at is going to be the mode names. So rather than show it on the radio, it's actually a little bit easier this one to do on the OpenTX companion software on the PC, because although we can navigate to it on here, all of the things make a little bit more sense, the layout's cleaner. Before we jump into that, let me very quickly show you how you access the information on here. We go into menu, hit the page button for the model until we get down to page 4 of 12. And here are the flight modes themselves. And uh, flight mode 0 is the one that's there by default. So let's go onto the PC and set this up. And first of all, look at how we set up the mode names and assign those to a switch. I've created a little model already in OpenTX Companion, this one called Flight Mode. So if I open this, here are all of the pieces. Now we're going to go into Flight Modes, and as you can see, it's a little bit more clearly laid out of what everything does. So for an explanation video like this, it's a much easier way for me to describe everything. Now you can get into all of these elements through the controls on the front of the radio, uh, but it's not as clear. So each of the flight modes can have a name. So let's set up our default flight mode. We'll call this something like um, auto level. And here we can set a fade in and fade out number. So rather than have a hard jump between each of the modes, on something like a sailplane, you probably want the fade in and fade out to be more than zero, because what you want to do is for the trims and control surfaces to migrate to their new position, not snap there uh, very quickly. So the trims can be set on their own. So they're set by the radio itself. 
and then underneath we have the global variables but for right now we're just going to set the names. So the thing with flight mode 0 is that there is no switch here that you can assign it to. This is the flight mode that will be there if nothing else is turned on. However, if we go into flight mode 1 and we call this something like GPS hold as we had in our previous demo, we can assign it to a switch. And if we put it on the same switch, we'll put it in the middle position of switch E. There we go. And again, we can fade in and out, and this time we can actually use different trims. So we can either have trims disabled, we can use the trims from another flight mode, or we can use the trims that are set here to add to the trims from another flight mode. So there's an awful lot. Or we could just have it set as our very own trim, so it completely overrides the other value. Flight mode 2. We're going to pop that into the other position of switch E. We'll pop, put it all the way forward. And we'll call it something like uh, GPS return to home. So now we have three flight modes. We have auto level, we can have GPS hold, and we can have flight mode 2. So if I just simulate the radio, and this time we'll actually have the Tronis simulator. Here we have the flight mode and we have auto level. If I put switch E into the middle position, we get GPS hold. And at the bottom, SE, we have GPS return to home. Now we could map those same switch positions as we've done in our previous videos into setting up whatever we want to happen. So we could also assign a voice so that it tells us which position we're in. So when it's in the back position, we play the track that says auto level mode, when it's in the middle position, GPS hold mode, and then GPS return to home mode. So that's the very, very basic piece. Second piece then we need to talk about is the one where we talk about trims. Now as we've already briefly looked at, each of these modes has its own trims. Flight mode zero is, is its own trims, you can't change that, you can either turn them on and off, and that's because that's the default fundamental flight mode that the craft is running on. Flight mode 1, 2, 3, 4, and all the others that you can then set up, you can actually decide how you want the trims to behave. So you can actually use the trims from flight mode zero, so basically whatever you've got set here is automatically brought across, or if you want to trim it slightly differently for that part of the flight, then you can change it here with either adding to, subtracting, or having their own trim set up. And again, you can set those trims in here automatically, or you can just type the number in and it'll do it. So that's quite a nice feature as well. And again, that's one where if you're flying a craft and what you'd really like to be able to do at the flick of a switch is actually set up different trim levels, this is how you can do it. So the third thing we can do then is to change global variables and use them to change a number on the fly as we change flight modes. So as we looked at, if we look at something like the mixes and we went into the elevator channel, there are these abilities to tick these things called GVs or global variables. And rather than us actually type in a specific number, we can say, well, don't get the number from there get it from another global variable and then we can choose one off the list. So this is where this stuff comes in really handy. If you've only got a couple of channels like this and no dual rates, it's pretty straightforward and easy to manage it yourself. But if you have a really complicated model with lots and lots of channels and you want things like exponential dual rates, anything where those little numbers could be popped in, you want to be able to change them easily, it's a great way to do it. The example is with something like the weight here. So if I wanted to set up a dual rate, it might be that I don't know what the dual rate is for this new model that I'm trying to play with. I might set um, the 100% for one dual rate, but I don't know what the other dual rate needs to be. It might be 70%. And I might go and add that to all of the different channels for all the different switch positions. And if I go and fly the model, I might find that 70% isn't enough, and I need to dial down the rate to 60%. And then what I need to come do is come back into each of these lines, find wherever I've put 70% and change it to 60. And in a complicated setup where you have lots and lots of lines and lots and lots of mixes, it can be tricky to keep track of all that.
but using a global variable we can change the global variable value once and that will then appear in all the places that we've set it up. So let me give you an example. If we go back to flight mode, let's set up global variable 1 to be something that does what I've just described. Call it rate. And we'll set the value to be 100%. So we'll have 100% of the value in mode 1. Now as we flick into mode 2, GPS hold, we might not want 100% of the throws, we might want to change it, and you can see it's keeping the name here so we can know which one we're doing. We can actually have its own value, and this time we'll have it at 80%, and then for GPS return to home, we're not going to want much um, control over the craft at all. We'll probably just put that down to like 20%. So we have 100% in auto level mode, the value then changes to 80% and then down to 20%. So let me show you what that looks like if we jump into the simulator. If I go into the global variables, you can now see that global variable 1 is 100, 80 and 20. Now we see that global variable 1 is set to 100 because that's the flight mode we're in. If I change, oops, if I change the flight modes, just moved it onto SA for this part of the demo. You can see that as I flick the different flight modes from auto level to GPS hold to GPS return to home, that global variable one is changing. So to use that in the actual mixes, we go back into mixes, we'll go into elevator, and this time we'll set it up as a global variable. We'll select global variable one, which is what we've just set, and now as I change the flight mode, that global variable one will change. So as I'm flying in auto level mode, I'll get 100% of my rates. Click in flight mode one, that'll drop to 80%. Click it in flight mode two, it'll drop to 20%. So rather than have to have three different lines for the elevator for each of the positions, it's actually all been taken care of by the flight modes. Very powerful. Again, it might not be something that you use if you're using pretty basic mixes, but if you get into larger planes with more channels or you want many modes to have different things happening at different times, this is a really cool way to simplify the programming of the model. So there we are, we've viewed the three things that we actually get out of flight modes. First of all, the basic one is we get to have something displayed on the screen that shows us what the mode is doing. The second one is it also allows us to have custom trims for each of those flight mode positions. Um, and we can either have our own trims or they can actually combine with another trim set on another flight position. And the last thing, we can also set up global variables for anything that we want. And those global variables can then be used in places where normally we would use a discrete value to allow things to change dynamically as we change the flight modes. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.